All right. So we have a question here from a listener that came through. It says, I have heard that this week's lunar eclipse on election day carries the same energy that the last lunar eclipse in Taurus had during the time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, a shift in allegiances and breaking with the governing body of the day. What can you tell us about the transitions in our world and how we can best navigate them? I thought that was a really good question. So let's ask Judah. Let me just welcome Judah and anybody Judah wants to bring tonight. Hello, Judah here. Well, we are thankful for this question about navigating the, the, the world climate and the pointer in the question to navigating the current political climate. Yes, yes, a similar energy, a similar energy astrologically to that of the season of the Declaration of Independence. You see, there are times when there are portals, windows opened between heaven and earth, and there is supernatural help and assistance coming down from the realms of heaven, down being the best word for your understanding, down from angels and other or beings of wisdom and divinity in order to assist humanity in the, the, the process of freedom and progression towards maturity and enlightenment, progression towards being your God selves and towards reconnecting with universal consciousness. And yes, the Declaration of Independence, that season and those who gathered, you see, in those moments of writing the Declaration, they were not taking up arms. Listen carefully. They were not taking up arms. They were armed with a pen and paper. And with the unity and brotherhood, sisterhood of their common purpose, which was to have the liberty to pursue their best life and their highest self. And so they wrote down their intentions with purpose and thought and care. And so it began. And so it began, the birth of the nation. And there was much to follow, much difficulty and prices to be paid for, for the birth of the dream. But remember in this similar season of energies, energies in which the heavens are opened and there is assistance for declaring your intention First, pen to paper, pen to paper, declaring your intentions of freedom, giving thought, soul searching. What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of nation do we want to be? How do we want to be different than the way we are being taught to be, told to be, guided and steered to be? What is it that we want to be free of? What are the constructs of thinking, doing, and being that are not serving us anymore? How can we shed them? And first, put your energy into your intention, not into your words, not into your actions, but pen to paper into your intention. Speaking from the heart. For these men and women long to be free of the tyranny of control and domination and structures that of men who were better than and out of touch with themselves up as gods without any connection to source 
or to the people they led for real leadership is has a servant quality of humility always a real leader serves all people not just some now you asked in the question how do we position ourselves during this time during this climate during this open heaven and these changes that may come and will come well first we will say a side note there are some coming to this vessel and to others like her who are asking to be told the future can we tell you the future well there are myriads of possibilities for future outcomes can we predict with some accuracy based upon your current orientation what those outcomes might be yes but we don't want to do that because we want to keep you in a a, a state a mental and emotional state of creation and if we tell you how it's going to be then you will throw your hands up and say well that's how it's going to be and then you will stop creating and we don't want that that is why we are not telling you all the future as you sometimes want to know you want to know the future when you want to know it because it makes you feel safe to know the future or it lets you off the hook to know the future and we don't want that we want you to stay engaged we want you to stay awake and aware and we want to keep you in a position of creating with your imagination and intention the world that you want to see the nation that you want to live in and for this reason we abstain from fortune telling now our changes of foot with this election yes most certainly and going back to the question again how do you hold yourself during this important season we want to give you a metaphor to help you in this season you see angels are very good teachers and they are very wise and they like to keep things simple so if we give you a metaphor it may help you to stay oriented in the way that is best for your soul first of all remember you can do nothing about everyone else you only have control over yourself so get yourself in the highest vibrational state that you can in order to impact what is going to happen in the next few days and months and years so here is the metaphor let's pretend that you are going to a football game if you are going to this football game as a fifth dimensional being we're going to define a fifth dimensional being as an enlightened being an enlightened soul that understands they are creating everything in their reality and takes responsibility for everything they are attracting a 5d being 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 a soul that understands it is eternal and is a a reflection a piece of god with a unique contribution to not just their own life and the people they know but the whole universe so let's say you are going to this football game as a 5d being you would simply enjoy and take pleasure in the game you understand it is a game it is a game and you do not care who wins or loses because you understand you remember it's just a game so you enjoy the sights the sound the energy you enjoy watching the skill and 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 the struggles of both sides the red team and the blue team you see you enjoy them both and maybe the red team wins and maybe the blue team wins but whatever happens as a 5d being you're not attached to the outcome and you can leave the game when it is over and forget about it now let's say you're attending the game as a fourth dimensional being 
We are speaking of most humans are fourth dimensional in nature, fourth dimension being the realm of thought and emotion. Now, within that realm of thought and emotion as a 4D being, there are many different places along a continuum in which you can attend this game of the red team versus the blue team. You may go to the game and you may have a preference. Well, I would prefer that the red team win or I would prefer that the blue team wins, but you're not overly attached to the outcome and you enjoy the game. And you watch everyone make their plays and their moves and a winner is declared at the end and you might feel hmm, a moment of disappointment, but you're not attached. You still understand it's a game and you can go on from the game after it's over and it doesn't disturb your day, whatever the outcome may be. Now you can move further and further down the continuum. Perhaps you have a defined and specific preference about who you want to win. And you've invested, you're investing your time and energy in this win. Your personal thoughts and emotions are invested in the outcome. And perhaps you experience some real anger or disappointment at the plays on one side or the other and how the game proceeds and how it ends and who the winner is that is declared. And perhaps, but perhaps you are able to shake hands with the other fans, the other side at the end. And even though you're disappointed somewhat and your team didn't win, maybe you can even have a beer with the guys from the other side and still relate to them on some level. But for others, their identity, their ego, their personality, who they are, their mental constructs are deeply invested in the red team or the blue team. And so you see, it's more than just a game then. Their very egoic nature is at stake. And if their team doesn't win, Their fearful parts will begin to dominate their thinking and their life. For they are afraid of the outcome if their team does not win. They are angry, resentful. They cannot leave the game behind. It's more than just a game. It's a part of who they are. And for some who attend this game that are heavily invested in their team, there have been at physical third dimensional football games, even fans who are so obsessed, they even kill, murder people from the other team, other fans, or run their cars into crowds of fans from the other team and so on. And this is a devilish sort of attachment. So let's go back. Can you in this season, can you put forth your loving intention, not about the red team, not about the blue team, but a loving intention for your nation and how you want your nation to be? And can you put forth a loving intention for all that is being created in the nation, the consciousness, the universal, the consciousness of the nation, the beautiful entity that she is. Can you meditate? Can you pray? Can you speak to this fifth dimensional intention rather than letting your egoic nature get tied up in potential outcomes? And can you let the game play out and be an unattached observer and trust and have faith 
that the powers that be are sifting, 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 sifting the hearts of men, sifting, sifting, sifting the hearts of men, sifting, sifting, sifting the hearts of men. And whatever is happening, whether it lines up with your perspective and your preference or not, is happening for a reason and will have its intended outcome. Can you trust? So we are asking you in these coming days, cast your vote in the third dimension. But more importantly than that, cast your vote in the realms of heaven. Cast your vote for love, for peace, for harmony, for wisdom, for cooperation for enlightened leadership, for conscious leadership, for an undoing of every construct that is not serving this beautiful entity called America. Cast your vote in meditation. Write down your intention, your declaration of independence for yourself and for all, both the red and the blue team. And be careful if you can, if you can be really, really wise, don't choose. Don't take sides at all. There is a story in the ancient scriptures of the Old Testament. Gideon was a leader of the nation of Israel. And an enemy was knocking on their door, encroaching on their borders and provoking war. He was a farmer. He did not, he was not a warrior. He did not want to lead armies. He had no, no experience in this area. And more than that, his soul was not in alignment of war with war. It wasn't in his nature. And so he came to, to the angel of the Lord. And he said, the angel, excuse me, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. And Gideon asked him, please, will you tell me, will we win? If we will win, I will go up and lead these armies. Tell me, are you for us? Or are you for them? And the angel of the Lord said, neither. You see, how can the maker be against anyone he has created? He cannot. And so if you are aligned with the creator, then neither should you be. Now, we hope that has been helpful and answered your question. And that is all on that topic. Mm -hmm.